Ecclesiastical notice for the principal is notice for the agent, and notice for the agent is notice for the principal. All the facts stated herein are true, correct, complete, and are not hearsay, are not misleading, but are admissible as evidence, and if called to testify, I shall so state. And further, I have standing capacity to act as to the lawful matters herein, and further, I have personal, first-hand knowledge, executive and documented knowledge of the facts stated herein, and further, I am a sovereign living soul and holder of the office, the people, and a judicial power citizen by the right of blood, and no mere civil law can remove my blood right inheritance to what my ancestors established at the revolution. The right of blood and kindred cannot be destroyed by any civil law. I am not in the military, and further, the use of statutes, codes, rules, regulations, or court citations within any document created by me at any time is only to notice that which is applicable to government officials and is not intended, nor shall it be construed, to mean that I have conferred, submitted to, or entered into any jurisdiction alluded to thereby. And further, all private business corporations are in fact subsidiaries of the Federal Municipal Corporation through their incorporation under the Federal Municipal Corporate Subsidiaries, also known as the State of Fill in the Blank, as evidenced by the recent executive order of the CEO of the Federal Municipal Corporation. I am competent to handle all my lawful and legal affairs without the ineffective assistance of a scumbag, low-life, bar card-bearing attorney, and I will bring suit against any corporation and its officers jointly and severally that attempt to delete ban, shadow ban, censor, or suppress my right to express political speech. Furthermore, I will call upon Trump's executive order on corruption to freeze your assets and force you to face me personally, rely upon the pro bono charity of one of your high dollar attorneys, or gamble upon the services of a public pretender just like anybody else. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a few things to say. Firstly, let's look at this. This right here is a quote from Thomas Jefferson to, in a letter to John Adams on the day they both died. These transact in referencing the War of 1812. These transactions now recollected recollected but as dreams in the night were then sad realities and nothing rescued us from their liberticide effect but the unyielding opposition of those firm spirits who sternly maintained their post in defiance of terror until their fellow citizens could be aroused to their own danger and rally and rescue the standard of the Constitution and that is exactly what I intend to do with this video ladies and gentlemen let me get started. This video is also not should be construed in any way, shape, or form as being legal advice. You'll see, I've got my Trump puppet over here, that I'm not trying to use the facial recognition features because the face rig software that I use, if they were the government was using the same fa facial recognition technology, nobody'd have anything to worry about as far as being tracked. It's crap. Anyway, let's get started. I don't lie, cheat, or steal, and I have a huge freaking problem with people who do. I'm going to tell you a truth that is so fundamentally self-evident that I hope you will trust everything else I have to tell you. This truth is two-part and is as follows. Number one, they never teach you one damn thing about law in school. And number two, they tell you for the rest of your life that your ignorance of it is no excuse. Furthermore, everything else they tell you that you can't prove to yourself empirically is a lie. 
either by omission, half-truth, or bald-faced lie, especially in regards to history, as evidenced by the fact that they just casually released the fact that Hitler was alive and well and living in South America until at least 1955 ago, uh, 1955, two years ago with the JFK dumps. A lot of the things I have to tell you may strike a chord of cognitive dissonance in you so hard that you might want to have a knee-jerk reaction and a temptation to call me the name the, created by the CIA to discredit those who didn't buy the JFK assassination story, conspiracy theorist. Or maybe even the oxymoronic term coined by your fundamentally corrupt and morally bankrupt FBI, sovereign citizen. And so... I would ask you to refer to number one and number two below or above. I'm going to show you why they lie about history and teach you nothing about law. I'm going to show you how the Republic for the United States of America was overlaid with a fake municipal corporation that has been pretending to be the same old Republic while ever encroaching upon the freedoms of we the people. I'm going to show you who you are and what your power is as an American and how you can take back the power and authority that was granted to the government and reform it and restore it as you see fit. And I'm going to use their own damn words to do it. And I hope and pray that you will listen because your life and those of your loved ones are on the line. We have one chance to do this, folks, and if we don't get it right, we can now see that it won't be a boot stomping on your face forever. It'll be a knee to the neck until you are dead. But if we do get it right, America will once again become the shining beacon of freedom on the hill, and it will provide a blueprint example for the rest of the world to follow. So let's get started. In order to understand how we have found ourselves in this mess with out-of-control government, you have to go back to the period of time right after the Civil War called the Period of Reconstruction. There were several acts passed at this time that are commonly referred to as the Reconstruction Acts. For the purposes of this video, the one we want to focus on is the Act of 1871, an act to create a government for the District of Columbia. Whatever other reasons there may have been for the Civil War, corporate lawyers got this act passed that created the Federal Municipal Corporation and overlaid it on top of our republic form of government. And it was intended and it implemented that they copied every word of the Constitution of 1787 that the Founding Fathers put, pink, ink, put ink to. But they made a serious deletion that would allow corporate attorneys with their bar cards and their titles of foreign nobility to serve in government where they had been prohibited from doing so previously. Then they proceeded to try and memory hole the Constitution of 1787 to mislead all Americans into corporate enslavement. But they couldn't even conceive of an internet at that time, or researchers who would discover the truth in a copy of the Virginia Statutes of 1819 that was prefaced by the Constitution of 1787. So let's take a look at the evidence that supports what some, some may claim is an extraordinary claim above. This is the title page of the 1819 Laws of Virginia, the Revised Code. And you can see right there, it says that it is prefaced by the Constitution of the United States, the Declaration of Rights, and the Constitution of Virginia. Now the thing about this is, this is the original 13th Amendment that was attached to the 1787 Constitution. If any citizen of the United States shall accept, claim, receive, or retain any title of foreign, no of uh, any title of nobility or honor, or shall, without the consent of Congress, accept and retain any present, pension, office, or emolument of any kind whatever, from any emperor, king, prince, or foreign power, such person shall cease to be a citizen of the United States and shall be incapable of holding any office of trust or profit under them 
for either of them. What that means, ladies and gentlemen, is no Esquires allowed. If you a, have a bar card and you're an attorney, then you are an Esquire. Okay? You can find the link to this entire PDF that has every single page. I've just cropped the 13th Amendment out of this. But the whole thing is there. And you can find that right there at the Family Guardian website. And, uh, or you can just run a search for 1819 Laws of Virginia and you'll find the PDF link. Okay. So, title. Persons. Titles are distinctions by which a person is known. The Constitution of the United States forbids the tyrant by the United States or any state of any title of no nobility. Uh, judges and members of Congress, that, that of honorable, and members of the bar and justices of the peace are called esquires. And you can see that's from Bouvier's Law Dictionary, 1856. I'm not going to bother to try and read Latin. There are two sorts of nobility the higher and the lower, Black's Law Dictionary. Esquire, the title applied by courtesy to officers of almost every description to members of the bar and others. In England, it is a title next above that of a gentleman and below a knight. Also from 18, 18, Bouvier's late 1856. And they had no authority whatsoever to alter our form of government Therefore, nothing they say is or do is lawful or de jure, and the Act of 1871 and the so-called laws that come from their fake and fictitious corporate knockoff constitution are an absolute nullity. Let's see what the case law here has to say about nullities. It never became a law and was as much a nullity as if it had been the act or declaration of an unauthorized assemblage of individuals. Where rights secured by the Constitution are involved, there can be no rulemaking or legislation which would abrogate them. And that's from American jurisprudence. A law repugnant, repugnant to the Constitution is void. An act of Congress repugnant to the Constitution cannot become a law. The Constitution supersedes all other laws and the individual's rights shall be liberally enforced in favor of him, the clearly intended and expressly designated beneficiary. And no one is bound to obey an unconstitutional law, and no courts are bound to enforce it. The general rule is that an unconstitutional statute, whether federal or state, though having the form and name of law, is in reality no law but is wholly void and ineffective for any purpose, since unconstitutionality dates from the time of its enactment and not merely from the date of the decision so branding it. An unconstitutional law in legal contemplation is as inoperative as if it had never been passed. July 26, 2011, from the Supreme Court. This is what else has been said. Sovereignty itself is, of course, not subject to law, for it is the author and source of law. While sovereign powers are delegated to the agencies of government, sovereignty itself remains with the people, by whom and for whom all government exists and acts. The governments are but trustees acting under derived authority and have no power to delegate what is not delegated to them. But the people, as the original fountain, might take away what they have delegated and entrust to whom they please. The sovereignty in every state resides in the people of the state, and they may alter and change their form of government at their own pleasure. The people, or sovereign, are not bound by general word and statutes, restrictive of prerogative right, title of interest, 
title or interest unless expressly named. Acts of limitation do not bind the king or the people. The people have been ceded all the rights of the king, the former sovereign. It is a maxim of the common law that when an act is made for the common good and to prevent injury, the king shall be bound, though not named. But when a statute is general and prerogative right would be divested or taken from the king or the people, he shall not be bound. And this is just, I'm keeping the case law on this just as light as possible, folks, just to try and make the point. There are tons and tons and tons more of case law just like this that says that because we, the people, kicked old King George Sorry's, sorry butt off of this continent, that his sovereign power descended upon all of us equally. We are all kings and queens, but the only subjects that we have to rule over are ourselves. That's sovereignty. It's when you join your sovereign power together with others, when you form into jural societies and jural assemblies, are you able to effectively assert your personal sovereign power. And I'll make other videos talking about this. But for now, just understand, you are the absolute source of everything in America. You are the source and the fountain of the law. And you can change anything you want without the assistance of the political theater politicians that are all just officers of a corporation. The Act of 1871 was not enacted by proper authority and it is not positive law and is an absolute nullity. The government is but an agency to the state, the state being the sovereign people. An unconstitutional act is not law. It confers no rights. It imposes no duties, affords no protection. It creates no office. It is in legal contemplation as inoperative as though it had never been passed. And that's not, see, that's why the Supreme Court is, all of this stuff upholds itself across the board positive law, law actually and specifically adopted by proper authority for the government or an organized jural society. Black's Law Dictionary, 5th edition. Absolute nullity, civil law, an act that is void because it is against public policy, law, or order. The, null the nullity is non-curable. It may be invoked by any party or by the court. Uh, and second definition is the state of such a nullity, Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. And if you want to go back to just plain old, quote unquote, civilian sources, we've got the Funk and Wagnall's New Practical Standard Dictionary from 1946 that defines terrorism as a system of government that seeks to rule by intimidation. Think and chew, my friends. There are three types of martial law. There's full martial law, soldiers on the streets used only in foreign country or to put down an insurrection. That's what they've been trying to lead you into. Martial law proper, which is the law of the armed forces, the U UCMJ. If you've ever gotten an Article 15, you yeah, know what that is. And then you've got martial law rule, the law of necessity and emergency used during peace times. And that's from Ex Parte Milligan. Now, I'm not going to go into all that. But, er, and this, everything the so-called government has done since 1933 has been under a state of emergency because it's in bankruptcy. It is, in fact, on its fourth bankruptcy. And the reason they are spending trillions of Federal Reserve notes is because they are about to reorganize into a fifth bankruptcy. And we have been under martial law rule the whole time. You just didn't know it because you didn't see troops on the streets. It was all enforced by these judges and lawyers. It is an established fact that the United States federal government has been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act, March 9, 1933. Public Law 89-719 declared by President 
Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent, H.J.R. 192, 73rd Congress in session, June 5th, 1933. Joint resolution to suspend the gold standard and abrogate the gold clause, dissolve the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacities of all United States government offices, officers, departments, and is further evidence that the United States federal government exists today in name only. That's from the United States Congressional Record, March 17, 1933. Take a look around you, folks. Take a look around you. Can you see how it exists in name only? Yeah, right. Let's move on. And they have intentionally kept America bankrupt to subvert the common law because under martial law rule, there is no common law. It is an established fact that the United States federal government, I'm not going to read that again. I got it in there twice. I did a lot of copying and pasting and trying to prepare this information, picking and choosing what to put in. We can't even begin to count the number of times judges, lawyers, and statesmen have said there isn't any common law anymore. It has been replaced by statutes. They would be more truthful if they said there isn't any common law anymore. It has been replaced by martial law. That's from Diet v. Turner, uh, the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Elliott of the Utah Supreme Court. I highly recommend you read that decision. Examine their, and this is also from the same, examine their state, county, and city police. All of the civil police officers are statutorily defined as a single form of officer, a peace officer. Do local police units have military ranks such as sergeants, captains, lieutenants, and quartermasters? Have you ever heard the police refer to people as civilians? What national flag and or state flag is displayed? displayed at their local police department. The county sheriff deputies in Oregon wear the yellow fringe national flag patch on their uniforms. Are you beginning to recognize the troops of occupation on every street of this union? Are you under occupation? When a local policeman enforces a curfew, as they are across this nation today, that's not what I added in, that was from then. Is the policeman enforcing the curfew as a sheriff's deputy, state policeman, or city policeman, or all three, or are all three enforcing the curfew as peace officers, i.e. state military police? The answer falls in the statute or ordinance they are enforcing. Curfew is strictly under a martial law jurisdiction. How many other state statutes or county slash city ordinances have been enacted by the state legislators, county commissioners, and city councils under martial law jurisdiction? One more point. The military police must have a military venue to perform as the state military police. The state regional areas under Metro government provide the military venue for the peace officers to enforce martial law jurisdiction. Now, can you understand that the nation is under occupation and has been for generations? I added the last part. The exercise of martial law jurisdiction within the several states is the usurpation of the common law and subjects the sovereign body to a jurisdiction that has no right to exist within the United States. Emergency does not create power. Emergency does not increase granted power or remove or diminish the restrictions imposed upon power granted or reserved. The Constitution was adopted in a period of grave emergency. Its grants of power to the federal government and its limitations of the power of the states were determined in the light of emergency, and they are not altered by emergency. 
And yet every consent involves a submission, but a mere submission does not necessarily involve consent. And officers of the court have no immunity when violating a constitutional right, for they are deemed to know of the law. Now that you understand the situation with government, let's talk about what your rights are when you encounter a jackbooted thug trying to enforce a military occupation upon you. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without the due process of law. Article 5 and Amendment, Constitution for the United States of America. Officers of the court have no immunity when violating a constitutional right, for they are deemed to know the law. Owens v. Independence. These principles apply as well to an officer attempting to make an arrest who abuses his authority and transcends the bounds thereof by the use of unnecessary force and violence, as they do to a private individual who unlawfully uses such force and violence. And, furthermore, an illegal arrest is an assault and battery. The person so attempted to be restrained of his liberty has the same right to use force in defending himself as he would in repelling any other assault and battery. Each person has the right to resist an unlawful arrest. In such a case, the person attempting the arrest stands in the position of a wrongdoer and may be resisted by the use of force, as in self-defense and self-defense up to including lethal force. That's what self-defense means. Whatever level of force you have to go to. Now, what, furthermore, one may come to the aid of another being unlawfully arrested, just as he may where one is being assaulted, molested, raped, or kidnapped. Thus, it is not an offense to liberate one from the unlawful custody of an officer even though he may have submitted to such custody without resistance. That ladies and gentlemen means if I had been on the scene I would have been forced uh, I should say on the scene in Minneapolis with Mr. Floyd I would have had no choice but to pull out my CC and pop the melons of all parties involved that were violating him. Okay? Now, I might have ended up fried by them because of the ignorance of everything, because they just do what they want to do. But that's what's right. And that's what even their own damn judges have said. Similarly, a person cannot be convicted of resisting a peace officer in the execution of his duty unless the officer was acting strictly within the limits of his powers and duty. If the officer makes an unlawful arrest, then there is a common law right to resist that arrest. Police Manual of Arrest, Seizure, and Interrogation, 8th edition, by the Honorable Roger E. Salhani, page 96. And any restraint, however slight, upon another's liberty to come and go as one pleases constitutes an arrest. So think on that. Police are unconstitutional to the 1787 Constitution. Sheriffs are lawful, being elected by the people. Even under their own statutes and codes, the sheriff is the highest law enforcement authority in his county and can order feds out of it. We've seen it happen. And some sheriffs are becoming very aware of that power. Also keep in mind that probable cause is defined by their own rules as only a breach of the peace or a felony that is personally observed by a cop's own two eyeballs. All else is just a charge based on information. Let me put in this piece of case law here. The carrying of arms in a quiet, peaceable, and orderly manner concealed on or about the person is not a breach of the peace nor does such an act of itself lead to a breach of the peace. Wharton's Criminal and Civil Procedure, 12th edition, volume two. 
You saw the case law that says we the people have the right to abolish, replace, or reform our government as we see fit. But there isn't any mention of what that process looks like. In order to hold elections, we need to form into jural assemblies, and it needs to happen fast. You probably don't know what a jural assembly is because of the first truth I told you. And I will make a separate video on this topic. But for now, go to the address below, which I will also put in the video description, and download the PDF from Anna Von Reitz. She has been written an amazing book on this subject that will put America on a fast track to a lawful reset to the Constitution of 1787. And today, we the people find ourselves in the very same set of circumstances politically that the Founding Fathers found themselves in prior to the Revolution. See if any of the following sounds familiar to you. He has affected to render the military independent and superior to the civil power. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our Constitution and unacknowledged by our laws giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation, for imposing taxes on us without our consent, for depriving us, in many cases, the benefits of trial by jury, Mr. Floyd, for abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies. That's a reference to Canada, and we'll get to that. He has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us for protecting them by a mock trial. Declaration of Independence, 1776. And statutes have been passed for the extending for extending the jurisdiction of courts of admiralty and vice admiralty beyond their ancient limits, for depriving us of the accustomed and inestimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property, and for altering fundamentally the form of government established by charter. We saw the misery to which such despotism, despotism would reduce us. That's from the causes and necessity of taking up arms of 1775. Any of that sound familiar? Any of it at all, folks? I could pull out case law citations and law in the history of law literally for days to make this argument. Most of the ones I've used here come from a document I've had for years called an Affidavit of Corporate Denial that is allowed to me under Texas Rules of Civil Procedure 52, which states, an allegation that a corporation is incorporated shall be taken as true unless denied by the affidavit of the adverse party, his agent or attorney, whether such corporation is a public or private corporation, and however created. My, uh, my affidavit of corporate denial, which effectively divorces and separates me from the corporation created in my name at birth and without my consent, is duly signed and sealed by a public notary in red ink and recorded in the clerk's office of the only corporate county in America that will still record a ham sandwich if it's documented properly. Pinal County, Arizona. I know who I am as a man and a living soul who has all the rights and prerogatives of the king, the former sovereign. I can trace my lineage to the man who got off the boat from England and changed the spelling of my family name and became involved with kicking old King George off this continent. If need be, I could trace my family tree all the way back to their involvement with the establishment of Magna Carta, but needless to say, I come from a long line of Christian rabble-rousers whose love of liberty is only exceeded by their hatred of tyrants. Now, I've gotten through all of the stuff that I have prepared that was scripted. 
And uh, let's see, let me find the images here. I got a bunch of stuff here in the, uh, uh, oh, well, I'll just start with this image. I just wanted to, cause I'm a shit poster, right? I gotta do it. Um, pardon the French, but you know, hey, look, you just can't drain a swamp by tossing in a can of Manhattan style fish assholes. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I mean, you can't do it. All right. And uh, if uh, for some reason, like, uh, you know, if any of this seems like strangely familiar to you for some reason, well, that's probably because Black Mirror got it right again. Remember the episode where the average plain old guy got his hands on the amorphous character here, Waldo, and started trolling the politician with it? Well, I don't know what to tell you, folks. It's 2020. It, it is what it is, okay? Uh, I don't think even that dude that wrote that could have seen Trump's face trolling Trump with all this. So, if uh, anything that I've said here resonates with you, if, um, well, I'm just, before I wrap it up, uh, as, as my wrap up, I guess, I'm just gonna say, I saw this coming. I see a lot of things coming. I knew we were going to arrive at this point somehow when Building 7 hit the ground. And I've, I did, I've done my part over the years. I, I did my protesting, you know, back in the day, uh, 15 years ago, you know, when it was safe to do so. And through the end of the 2000s with 9-11 Truth, I, I had my little cardboard sign that I made with the markers and told people, you know, Google loose change or terror storm and little old ladies kept handing me pocket change and dimes, nickels and quarters and I'm like, why are they doing this? And then yeah, I'm slow, it didn't dawn on me. And, but I kept using the money to burn copies of loose change and hand that out. Uh, and special shout out, thank you to uh, Lou Kordalski and uh, Jason Berman for, for having made that video in the first place because, you know, you guys really started us down the path all of this, all of us. Uh, so, when I started this channel, I also realized that the censorship was coming, and uh, I kept my channel small intentionally, uh, so that I wouldn't get the ban hammer and get kicked off the platform just for looking like Donald Trump. And I imagine that some of my content's been suppressed, it doesn't really seem to take off, never did take off like it did. And I'm going through an awful lot of trouble to even get this video out to you because January of 2019, I went all Battlestar Galactica on this thing and decided no network computers in my home and stopped generating Wi-Fi signals. So I don't even, I may be bathed in them from around me, but I'm not generating any. And so I'm using my, my technical skills to get it out there to you. And uh, so, since I've pursued this strategy, and I knew this time would come where it just wouldn't matter, feel free to please like this video, subscribe to my channel, please, because if I could get over that thousand subscriber mark, I would be more than happy to be able to do some live streaming out and about in public. So I just want to thank you for your time and attention, and God bless, take care of yourself, and Defend yourself as needed, but don't start violence, and it's, don't don't become involved in the uh, attempted communist uprising. God bless and have a good day.